Hi, I'm Jancy Despain with Friday Idea Tutoring. This is a short video series that's going to cover the Clase and Rearrangement. I'm going to spend a little bit of time showing you how to predict product and quite a bit of time showing you how to do the mechanism of this reaction. But first I want to show you how to identify the types of molecules that are going to undergo this reaction. Because as you know, on a test, your professor isn't always going to say, now show me how to predict the product or show me the mechanism of the Clase and Rearrangement. Rather, they're just going to toss a molecule at you and expect you to know what to do with it. So I want to show you the two types of molecules and how to identify them that are going to do this type of reaction. The functional group that's going to undergo this reaction is an ether. And we're specifically looking for allele phenyl ethers and occasionally also for allele vinyl ethers. Some professors don't cover the allele vinyl ethers, but I am going to cover them here just in case. Allele phenyl ethers have an oxygen between a phenyl group and an allele group. And what's special about an allele group is that it has a carbon-carbon double bond separated from the O by an sp3 carbon. An allele vinyl ether has that same allele group and a vinyl group on the other side. And the allele and vinyl groups can look different from one another because the vinyl group has the carbon-carbon double bond directly bound to the O, where the allele group is separated from the O by an sp3 carbon. Now, not all of your allele phenyl ethers and allele vinyl ethers are going to look exactly like these molecules. They can have other groups attached. For example, your phenyl group can have other bonds, your allele group can have other bonds, so can your vinyl group, and you can even have other bonds on the sp3 carbon of your allele group. So these molecules can look very different. So I want to give you a chance to practice some of these skills that you just learned. I'm going to show you a bunch of molecules and let you see whether you can identify the ones that do qualify for place and rearrangements and the ones that don't. Okay, now it's your chance to practice. Why don't you take a minute, draw these molecules, and then hit pause. See which ones qualify as allele phenyl or allele vinyl ethers and qualify for the Claisen rearrangement. And then which ones don't fall into these categories and therefore wouldn't qualify for the Claisen rearrangement. And then let's come back and compare answers. All right, I'm going to start over here on this end. Here we have an allele group. A carbon-carbon double bond is separated from the O by an sp3 carbon and a phenyl group. And yeah, there are some other atoms attached, and that's okay. So this does qualify. It's an allele phenyl ether. Here we have a vinyl group and an allele group. And yeah, there's an ethyl attached to that sp3 carbon, but that's okay. This is an allele vinyl ether. Here we have an allele group and a vinyl group. This qualifies. Here we have a phenyl group and a vinyl group. And both of these groups are okay, but they don't go together. We need at least one allele group with every uh, ether. So this will not work for the Clase and rearrangement. Here also is a phenyl and a vinyl. This won't work either. And here we have a phenyl, and this looks suspiciously like an allele group, but there are two sp3 carbons between the O and the carbon-carbon double bond. So that won't work either. So out of all of these, we had three no's and three yeses. Hopefully this practice helps a little bit with identifying the right kind of molecules that you can use for the Clayson rearrangement. Now, for part two, I'm just going to quickly show you what the products of the Clase and Rearrangement are supposed to look like, and then we'll spend quite a bit of time on the mechanism of this reaction.